Well, and speaking of Lennox Gusto, how common is that, Elizabeth? And tell me a little bit about the symptoms and how those present. Sure. So Lennox Gusto, uh, similar to Dravet, is one of our really difficult to treat epilepsy syndromes in childhood. Uh, and it's quite different and distinct from Dravet. As Ian said, Dravet has a very stereotype presentation, kind of in early childhood, and many of the kids have a result of a single gene. Um, LGS is quite different, and the onset is usually later, and the onset is not quite as stereotyped. Um, typically, uh, kids have onset of Lennox Gastaut between three and five years of age, and many of the kids prior to developing what we would consider Lennox Gastaut have other seizure types um, or other neurologic difficulties. Uh, and then kind of as Lennox Gastaut develops, the children will develop, similar to Dravet, mixed seizure types, typically tonic seizures, um, drop seizures, which often result in injury, um, tonic-clonic seizures, and frequently atypical absent seizures, which for some of my kids occupy the majority of their day. They spend just hours with atypical absent seizures. But because it's an evolution, it can actually take longer to diagnose LGS. But LGS is wicked common, and we think that probably about 4% of pediatric epilepsies um, would be consistent with LGS. For the diagnosis, you not only need those seizure types, um, but really to be a purist, you also want to see slow spike and wave on an EEG, and that can also not be present quite at the onset. So diagnosing LGS can be a little bit more difficult and take a little bit more time. So as a pediatric epileptologist and neurologist, we need to keep stepping back and reassessing what's going on with our patients, and does this fit? Is it suggested that this child is developing LGS? And Elaine, if you could comment on that triad that you know, Elizabeth mentioned and how that changes over time. And I think Eric alluded to some of that as related to the challenges, but tell me about how that changes. Yeah, so I think um, one of the characteristic seizure types that we think in, that we see in Lennox Gesto in, in young children are the drop seizures, the atonic seizures. And um, as you go into adulthood, um, those often um, resolve or significantly decrease. Most adults with Lennox Gesto will still have some degree of tonic seizures. Many of them will still have atypical absence. But also the very characteristic EEG changes that we see, the slow spike wave, is often not there in adults. One clue, though, that I think mo that persists in most adults is still to see that generalized paroxysmal fast activity on EEG. So that's important to look for. But the classic triad that Elizabeth mentioned, the, the slow spike wave, if that's what you're looking for in adult, um, you may not get that diagnosis. And Eric, as, as we transition, and you alluded to this from paper records to electronic records, how can we then help our adult colleagues to not misdiagnose or forget the diagnosis? Uh, I'll tell you a couple of, of tips. One is that first to look at Lennox Gastaut. It's a great work from Dr. Lennox and Gastaut, but it's like everything. We have to update it and make it better. So they gave us like a still life, but Lennox Gastaut is a movie. Yeah. And the only three essential factors of Lennox Gastaut are having an etiology for epilepsy, any of them, refractoriness early on, not forever, but early on, and uh, a childhood onset, of course. If you have those three, you don't have to have any gene that makes you have Lennox Gastaut. There may be some genes that may make you more prone to develop it, but that's what you need. So this movie have a lot of different scenarios. And, and the, the good thing, even though we call it an intractable epilepsy, what we mean is an uncontrollable epilepsy because we're treating it and it's not controlled, but, um, but it can be controlled. So we have movies that have a good ending. We have movies that you can actually prevent the devastating effects of Lennox Gestalt. So we have movies that actually we become iatrogenically a factor. Like someone with Rave that never gets the correct diagnosis or treatment, you can make it go into Lennox Gestalt. So we have a lot of different directions of this movie. And uh, I agree about the comments earlier about how many factors can make you miss the diagnosis. We came up with a Something that can be used, there are many different ways of doing it, but we have a, a paper on epilepsy and behavior that is called Refractory Epilepsy Screening Tool for Lennox Stock. And it's trying to tell you that most of the patients, if you look at major and minor criteria for Lennox Stock, you can look at the traditional triad, which is cognitive regression, multiple seizure types, the 2.5 hertz spike in a slow wave, and childhood onset. Those are major criteria. But you have minor criteria. 
You know, you, you see an epileptic walking in your clinic with a chin laceration, very specific for Lennox just stuck. So you have to look at these other things that may tell you, hey, this is Lennox just stuck. Helmet use, facial injuries, uh, refractoriness to vagal nerve stimulation, surgery, ketogenic diet, all these things. So when you look at major and minor criteria, it's a very tiny tool that if you check, most of the refractory epilepsies have one or two of the major criteria and maybe one or two of the minor. Lennox Gestalt usually has three or more of the major and three or more of the minor. So with that simple thing that we actually check by doing a medical students filling the card by reviewing records, it's uh, very reliable. You don't have to be a, an epileptologist to say this is possibly Lennox Gestalt.